Hi, I'm Rev Cat, and welcome to Just For You. I'm so glad you tuned in today because we have a special Christmas program just for you. <laughs> it's the good news that the gospel starts here, you know. This is the time of Jesus' birth, and Jesus was the promised Messiah. It's still a good message. It's the message of hope and healing. Healing for your body, your soul, and your spirit. So let's begin with prayer. Father, we come before you today to give you praise and glory and honor. Because truly it all belongs to you. We thank you, Lord, for how you orchestrate all things, Lord including our lives. <laughs> and we thank you, Lord, and we give you all the praise and glory and honor how you sent your only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him did not perish but have an everlasting life. Father, we ask that you be here in a mighty way with your precious Holy Spirit that the words that go forth will be your words anointed by your precious Holy Spirit. And I thank you, Lord, for the privilege and the honor to be able to proclaim the gospel wherever I am, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're gonna begin with a reading from the uh, Gospel of Luke, the the Christmas story can be found in two Gospels, in Luke 2 and in Matthew 2. So I'm not going to read all of it, but I am going to read a portion from both of us, uh, from both of us, from, from both of these scriptures. Praise the Lord. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And all went to be taxed, every one to his own city, his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee and out of the city of Nazareth and into Judea and into the city of David, which he called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David. He was there to be taxed with Mary, his spouse wife, being great with child, meaning she was nine months along. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Another way of saying she was ready to give birth. She brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and she laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were, in the very same country, some shepherds in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. And you know, uh, and you know uh, when they were out, this, this scripture right here, just this one scripture, is because it's, it's telling when the shepherds were out abiding in the fields, watching over their flock. Okay, what happened, um, a little um, facts here, the uh, shepherds would go out, take the sheep and go out into the fields in the month of April. And they pretty much stayed, they stayed there until October, possibly November. But, uh, and that, so it's, so that proves, you know, that he wasn't uh, born on, in December. But I think that happened because of, you know, wanting um, to combine uh, uh, traditions and celebrations of all people, you know, into, into one, <laughs> something like that. But anyway, uh, so, and then in verse 9 it says, And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. You see, it, ha it happened suddenly. 
you know. So, you know, I mean, can you imagine? They're out there at nighttime, and so the only thing up there is the stars and the moon, you know. And then all of a sudden, the, the angels show up in the glory of the Lord. You see, this, this happening with the Lord showing up, with God showing up, it's just like um, with Moses in the burning bush. And when, uh, when he was leading the Jews across the, out of Egypt and, the, and a cloud followed them day and night, you know? And so it's the same kind of presence, but the glory, but it's up in the sky. So the glory of the Lord, I mean, God is light. One of the things he is is light. And so the, I imagine the whole sky was lit up. For you, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I skipped a verse. So nine, let's go back. Nine, it says, Lo, the angel of the Lord came about them, came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone right about them. The sky was just all lit up with his glory. And it says, And the angel said unto them, Fear not, in other words, don't be afraid. For behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. You see, at that time, there was basically two groups of people, two races. Two groups of people, really. The Jews, which was a race, and um, all, as well as the religion, and the Gentiles. And the Gentiles was made up of the Philistines and the Jebusites and the Hittites and all the different, all the different uh, groups of people that you read about in the, in the Old Testament. Praise the Lord. For unto you this day is born in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. See, there it is again. And suddenly there was the, about the swaddling clothes. It gets mentioned because that was a sign to those that went to, um, to the shepherds and, and to the, uh, the three wise men. And there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, a multitude of heavenly hosts is like, I mean, the sky just uh, became flooded with these angels. Okay. And they said, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace and goodwill towards men. And it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them unto heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let's go even into, over into Bethlehem and see this event which had come to pass, which the Lord had made known to us. The Lord made known to these humble shepherds in the field, you know. And it's because they, they knew the Lord. And so did the wise men. And they came with haste, and they found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. And when they had seen it, they made abroad the saying that were told of them concerning this child. In other words, they told everybody that they came in contact with. They told them all about this, this wonderful thing that happened to them in the field, how the angels showed up, and how they told them about this this babe, that the Savior, our Savior was, that is born, has come to earth. And all that heard it wondered at those things which were told to them by the shepherds. And it says that Mary kept all these things and she pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen as it was told to them. You know, there's something about when Jesus shows up. <laughs> that something always happens. A miracle always happens. And uh, 
And it says, just like the, the man that was crippled, it says that when he left, he was leaping, he was jumping and leaping and praising God. And these guys were, were, were glorifying and praising the Lord because they were so exceed, they were filled with exceeding great joy. So now um, I'd like to play some music for you. Um, and uh, I'm going to sing along, and uh, you can sing along with me. Okay.
love is love, and wonders of his love, and wonders, wonders of the Lord. That was something a little different. We got a little bit from from uh, several songs. Praise the Lord. So now I'm going to read from uh, Matthew and this will be another uh, familiar uh, scripture to you. It's Matthew, Matthew chapter 2 starting at uh, verse 1. And then uh, skipping over uh, verses 1 to, uh, oh, let's see here. Uh, 1 to 15. Yeah, there it goes. Okay, now, when Jesus was born in Bethlehem out of Judea in the days of Herod, the king, behold, there came a wise man from the east to Jerusalem. They, um, they came by way of King Herod. And then it said, we're going to skip down a few verses. And then Herod, when he had pivotally called the wise men and inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared, and then he sent them to Bethlehem, and he said, Go and search diligently for the young child. And when you have found him, bring me word again so that I might go and worship him. Yeah, right. But I think that they kind of figured that out then. But we'll see what happens later on. When they had heard the king, they departed, and lo, the star which they saw in the east went before them. It led the way, in other words. Until, and it led the way until it came and stood over where the young child was. Now, the, um, or when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. You know, a few years ago, it's like, I don't know, that just really stood out to me. And to this day, I don't know that I could properly explain exceeding great joy, except that in another place, when it talks about a description of joy, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. It's full of the glory of the Lord. You're full of life, and when you're full of life, you, you know, you're, um, it's joy. <laughs> we call it happiness, you know, but uh, praise the Lord. So this exceeding great joy was like joy unspeakable and full of glory. And it says in the next verse, and when they were coming to the house, you see, Jesus wasn't in the stable anymore. In fact, he was, he would probably, um, some th say that he, he was probably in Nazareth at that time. And so when they had come into this house where Jesus was, they, they saw the young child with Mary, his mother, and they fell down and they worshiped him. And then, and when they opened up the, the treasures, they presented him with gifts of gold and, and incense and frankincense and myrrh, and being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed to their own country another way. So you see, God looked 
um, God was um, looking out for them. And um, he, because they were, they were, um, they were godly men. They believed, they believed in the Lord God, Jehovah. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared now to Joseph in a dream, saying, Arise, and take the young child and his mother, and flee unto Egypt. And be thou there, in other words, you stay there until I bring you word. For Herod is seeking the young child because he wants to destroy him. So when he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt. And it was there that he stayed until the death of Herod, that it might be fulfilled that which was, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet Hosea saying, out of Egypt I have called my son. That can be found in Hosea 11 and 1. See, the Lord, he, you know, as much as we, we try, sometimes we, we try to uh, remember everything, you know, when we're doing a task, you know, but sometimes we forget something or we didn't have the right amount of time, you know, to make it just the way you wanted it, you know. But God isn't like that. He covers all the bases. That's the that's the way that it that uh best way I know how to to explain it, you know. And you don't have to worry. That's why you can trust in and lean on and rely on Him, because He He it, when He He takes very good care of us. All His ways are perfect. Amen. So, praise the Lord. So, you know, um, that Jesus came, when Jesus came, even, the, even in his birth, it was miraculous. Uh, things happened all, all over. And, uh, you know, even, even when, uh, uh, you know, when they, even when John, who was the one who was to, uh, John the Baptist was the one that was to proclaim, to proclaim Jesus. You know, he, um, they wanted to call him, the, the tradition was to call him, uh, uh, you know, a family name. But God said that he was to be called John. And the father said, Zachariah said he wasn't. He wasn't going to do any such thing, and so God made him. So he he couldn't he didn't speak until the day that John the Baptist was dedicated, as in as they did, you know. And um, and when they asked him his name, he said his name was John, and began and then he began to prophesy, and the Lord just spoke, you know, wonders through him. But you know, Jesus is coming again, and before that, he's coming in the clouds. You know, we have talked about the rapture, the body of Christ. You know, that that Paul said he didn't want us to be, uh, not not to be ill-informed or not informed at all. He wanted us to to know, you know, what was going to happen. As God had, as it had been revealed to him, and uh, that Jesus is going to appear in a cloud and with the sound of the trump. You know, when the, the angels were in the sky, they were singing and, and you know, I, every time you see pictures of angels, or well, many times, you, you see them blowing on horns, so who knows, you know. But it, the Bible says that, the, um, that the, uh, the, the sound of the trump and then we're going to be out of here because Jesus is coming back for his bride. And his bride is the church. It's his church. And his church is made up of people that have put their faith and their trust in him and totally and completely relying on him for their salvation. And then the second coming, then there's a period of tribulation and then the second coming, but there's, there's no tribulation up there in heaven where, where we're all, where the church is going to be. <laughs> in fact, there's a banquet being prepared for the bride. 
And then the second coming, it was prophesied in Isaiah 11, and then it's uh, and then the fulfillment of it is spoken of in Revela in Revelation 19 and 11. It says, and the prophecy at Isaiah nine, chapter 9 and verse 6 says, is the one that the the, the famous hand of Messiah, for unto what's a child is born, unto us a son is given, unto us a son is given, <laughs> and the government shall be upon his shoulders. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Prince of Peace, and the Everlasting Father. Praise you, Jesus. So, um, and so some other scriptures uh, that show the fulfillment in the New, in the new uh, Testament, one is the one that we all know, John 3, 16 and 17. Uh, for, uh, yeah, now I said that one. It says, um, there, there, the mind goes blank. I hate that when it happens to me because I know it. John three sixteen. Oh, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him did not perish but have an everlasting life. For he sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So I pray that, uh, that you would come to know him and the power of his resurrection to receive him as your savior and allow him to be Lord in your life. Father, we just thank you um, for your word. We thank you for your great and precious promises. We thank you that you watch over your word and it does not return to you void, but it accomplishes the very things that you sent it out to do. And we thank you, Lord, that when you, when, when you made the announcement, you made the announcement to the shepherds that were in the field that were, God, that were believers in you, Lord. They were serving you. And we just thank you, Lord. And they were just went about evangelizing all over, telling everyone they knew. Praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory and the honor and the praise. So with that, so with that, uh, I, let's see. with that, I would like to close and say, I hope, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a blessed new year ahead. And I pray that you would take time to, to sit around the table and just share with your family, you know, maybe things that you remember and the times, other times that you've had together, or just to talk about what's going on in their lives right now. But to take that time to enjoy your family. So Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, I'll see you in 2022.